you mind? Well, good morning, everyone. Paul, alcoholic. Uh, happy to be here again. Uh, I wanted to read something out of the big book. First, just to, again, uh, the reference point is looking at the program, specifically the exact nature of our wrong, as a, an act of being identified as self not ego self and self uh, to me is a feeling of being a long lasting independent separate thing. And that feeling is reinforced by the claiming of life, basically the basis of life, which is starting with seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching, throwing, thinking there. And the feeling of being the seer, the hearer, the feeler, the taster, the toucher, the thinker, the doer, uh, that sense of proprietoriness or ownership, I think has been infected with a foreign pathogen. And we're basically living under the influence of a parasite and, an as and an, another aspect of another parasite is amplifying let's say the first parasite, which is this idea of being self. And uh, it just opens us up for occupation, really. And it gets to such a point that we feel like we have to have, we have to find and maintain a spiritual condition, which I believe is our inherent condition, that we are spirit before body, brain, doer, thinker, feeler, seer. Yeah. Uh, this is, I've been, this has been brought to the program from my own experiences. It's not the main point of the program. The, the program can be interpreted, not the principles or the steps, but uh, it's looked at in a lot of different ways. And we're just, we're emphasizing this one way rooted in the statement on page 64 of being convinced self manifests in various ways is what has defeated us. Uh, being convinced of that, that self or this foreign pathogen has defeated us. We are now going to look at the inventory in a different way. We're going to look at resentments and fears and harming other people in the pursuit of what we want by looking at the sexual behavior. We're going to look at that as manifestations of self in one's life, not our manifestations, not our resentments, not our fears, not our acting out. This is not an escape from responsibility in this world. It's a recognition of accountability, which is a which is quite different than an, uh, an overbearing sense of responsibility of being responsible for shit we had nothing to do with. And I truly believe under the influence of intoxicants with alcoholism and an addiction, we're apt to do almost anything at any given moment, not based on our own condition, but based on the diseases condition. So we're going to, I just try to bring this view to the program because I find there's a lot of ways of seeing this way of life. And some people get sort of stuck or end up at a dead end or get uh, a certain like seven foot or eight foot ceiling. And that's all it can be. And then if you see the same statements in the book in a different light, it may open up all new possibilities for us. And some of us will follow those possibilities and we'll have a radical change where the relief that we live from and as will stabilize and will become more dominant than the irritability, restlessness, and discontent, the basis of alcoholism. So there's a statement on page 60. So the thing is 64, that's, that's casting a light on the inventory process as looking at self's manifestation in our lives. And by doing the inventory, you'll see the pattern of the defeat that you've lived under with the hopes that recognizing the patterns 
they'll infer or imply the cause, which is this identification. And I'm talking mostly about uh, the false evidence that's appearing real, constantly being presented in our heads all day. So uh, it gives you an idea or a way to see false evidence as false evidence. And then I would see most of our troubles and my troubles and anxieties are really based on what's not happening. They're based on the past and the future. And to have the past and the future com completely dominate my present seems like a form of slavery to me. And uh, there is a solution. So page 68, the second paragraph, if you have a book, he's, he gives us this possibility. Perhaps there is a better way. We think so. For we, now, we are now on a different basis. All right, what's that basis? The basis of trusting and relying upon God, or let's call it the higher power, whatever you want. We trust God rather than our finite, finite selves. So if you just look at the, how the solution looks in our lives is there's a trusting in God. So then you could imply, use that by saying how it looked from the addiction point of view was a trusting the finite self. Yes, this is to me the bondage of self and this is the relief of the bondage of self when that faith and that trust that we represent as an event here is moved to trusting something infinite rather than finite self. That's when we're on a new basis. Yeah, that's the basis they're speaking about. So the basis of trusting and relying upon God, which is the opposite of trusting and relying upon Paul. That's the whole point. Because Paul, aka self, has failed. Why? Because it's a failed system. That's as simple as that. And what can a failed system show us, and I hope it has already, which is it's failed. That's its value. Its value is to see that it has no real inherent value, that we move from there and rely and find ourselves established in a new basis. That's the, that's the program of recovery. We recover from the reliance on self, and now the recovery appears of, as us relying on something infinite. It implies we're going to rely on something here, yeah? <laughs> and those are the two large categories, either self or God or higher power. So we trust infinite God rather than our finite selves. Now, how do I trust finite self? I don't, you know, it's not a mantra I'm chanting all day. I trust finite self. I trust finite self. But I'm listening to the system, the narration, the, uh, that stream of thoughts and conceptualizations and projections and forecasts, I'm listening to them with a great uh, devotion. I have faith in the thoughts about next week's, and the faith is so strong that next week's dominates today. I mean, I don't know how many, dem how many demonstrations do you need? If I'm occupied by next week and it overrides my ability to be present today, seemingly, it never does, but it, it seems like it has, then I, I must be in the prior basis, which is trusting finite self. Oh, he is so, we trust infinite God rather than our finite selves. We're in the world to play the role he assigns. How am I going to find out what he is signing if I keep listening to the fucking problem? <laughs> I mean, for me to get to hear what my assignment, I've got to be attentive to the one who's giving me the assignment. If I'm attentive to the one that's assigned me a certain lot in life of being irritable, or restless and distant and constantly trying to escape my present state, my present conditions because they're produced by past and future, yeah, I can't hear the assignment that the higher power wants to offer me. So we are, we are in the world to play the role he assigns, just to the extent that we do as we think he would have us and humbly rely on him, does he enable us to match calamity with serenity? That's traveling lighter. 
because life's, there's going to be calamities in life, but how do I travel through them? Yeah? Do I, do I, do I match calamity with more anxiety that, in, in, that increases the calamity, or do I match it with serenity? That, that response is, is conditioned on the basis I'm living in. If I'm living in trusting something finite, if in hindsight, you'll see that that is what's producing the calamities, you know? It's sort of like when I work with people and, you know, their house is on fire. I'm not going to tell them there is no house, there is no fire. I'm going to tell them where there's the nearest pail of water. But then after a few of these emergencies, you want to sit down with the person and say, doesn't it seem pretty suspicious that you're out a lot of fucking fires and to see their role in it? So basically, when I'm relying on the finite, I'm, I'm probably going to match calamity with calamity. Yeah? If I'm relying on the higher power, I match calamity with serenity. I mean, th- perhaps that's the better way. And it's not based on uh, like a you know, chance and randomness, it's based on the basis I'm, I'm living from. We've had a shift or we're in the, the, the process of shifting. We have had a shift from relying on a failed system to relying on something that works. That's the beauty of it. And then our lives, or actually our response to our lives, show the difference. I mean, the evidence is right before our eyes. And it's a simple program. Now, I'm just sharing you, I'm just sharing an idea from the recognizing the basis or the the exact nature of the wrong is a mistaken identity with a mental image and taking it to be myself and then living from that image. And that image is constantly reinforced by resentments being called mine, fears being called mine, acting out being called mine. Yeah. And that all based something finite has brought me to where I am. So, all right, well, that's it. You know, we shared, one more thing, we shared with David from England, and, you know, he he used the word radical, and then that's what, I don't like that term, we're just looking at it in a different way. We're not negating the way of, ah, these are my resentments, these, I've got to work on it, and this and that. I'm not negating any of that. I'm adding on, there's a maybe another way of looking at it, yeah? Because for some people, that one way of looking at it runs out. After a few years, they can't, their program can't be fear-based. They can't be, you know, doing what they're doing seemingly on the basis of being afraid that they're going to drink every, other, every day. They, we outgrow certain conditions. And maybe we need a new way of looking at the program to fit the new conditions we're in for some of us. There's nothing wrong with that. The the, uh, the tent of AA is huge. A lot of ideas can be entertained in the same structure of the steps and the principles. Yeah. So there you have it. Okay. Well, thanks very much, Paul. Um, so I invite everyone now, if, you want, if you've got any questions, you want a question for Paul about this or anything to do with the, the steps or whatever's in the big book, it's a great opportunity to do so. Um, before that, I can ask a question. I've got a couple of questions uh, up my sleeve. Um, but again, I'm not seeing any hands. So I just, um, and sorry, Paul, I haven't uh, paid exactly amount of amount of attention tonight because we've had it today because we've we've had a few of our visitors our friend our regular visitors have come back with a with, with not great intention so we've managed to boot them out so well done there for Lebowski and myself for uh, getting on with that um the when i i i kind of had went through a transition of thinking with the head and, and, and it, can i just share something in a way yeah sure the attacking of zoom bombers is a certain uh metaphor for what's happening with the problem when it's hearing the solution yeah yeah we have our own little landmines up there already set yeah so anytime there's a new possibility the the arrival or the walking towards that possibility 
is strewn with landmines laid down by the problem, yes? By the ego or the self. By, the, by an activity, a mental activity whose main agenda is to, su is to survive and reinforce its primacy, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's, we put up our own objections, I guess, don't we? In, so many In other words, the tyrant isn't going to leave office. The tyrant isn't going to leave office in a nice, you know, lovely way. It usually <laughs> has to be sort of, it's going to put up a fight. And that's a good indication something's actually working. Yeah. That, and that, that's true on so many different levels. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, so, yeah, yeah that, well. Hopefully not at the end of the year, that's for sure. Um, so when I started, stopped sort of thinking with an intellectual process, um, and I used to sort of hand my life and my will over to my higher power, as, a, as I saw it as a higher power, um, it took a long while for that descent from actually being an intellectual or, or, a, or a brain or a mind exercise before it seeped down to my heart, if you know what I mean. And um, it's only happened in the yeah. last couple of years when that, that happened, and and that kind of liberation from that and finding that love, which is always there was, was, was quite eye opening back when, when it happened and it stopped being an intellectual process, as I said, and became a kind of an emotional one or, or, or a feeling one or a heart one. Or, and um, I just wanted to see your, how does that, how does that happen? Could, could I have made that happen quicker through the steps or is it just something that when I'm ready, I'm ready. It's going to happen when it happens, but it sets up. There's no, at a point, that's the only way maybe you can understand is intellectually, because there's been a reliance on that. So it's not in, in the battle with the heart. It may precede the arriving at the heart. Yes? Mm -hmm. I don't see it as an antagonist uh, in the process. I see it as a... Uh, in a way for many, a necessary step that leads to another reliability. So you find that there's been a huge reliance on intelligence, which is part and parcel to trusting the finite, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then the program weans you off of that. But I'm not a real believer in the glory of stupidity either, <laughs> you know? Yeah, thanks very much. I know, I'm not. I, yeah. Yeah, I think I feel understanding, even intellectual, for many people, that's the starting point. It's not the end point. Okay. You won't get to the heart, but through the intellect for certain people. So basically, it's just sort of like the 12 steps in a way. They're a linear process, and the, the step that precedes the next step produces the conditions for the being convinced of the next step. Well, in a lot of ways, for a lot of people, it's the same way. Yeah. The only mail slot on their front door is an intellectual mail slot. So mm -hmm. the message gets through there first. Hopefully what reads it is the heart. Yeah. But. Okay. And it's just a process. It's part and parcel. If it takes longer or shorter, Really, so what? Yeah, you can't speed up the train by running in the in the in the car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You yeah. running to the front of the train isn't going to get the train there any faster. Lovely. Beautiful. Got a couple of hands up now. Okay, for that. So um, I saw G had a hand, had his hand up, and Gabrielle. If you want to put your hands up again, but we're going back to our, our mate Kaiser's back again. So I'll unmute you, Kaiser. There you go, man. Hi there, I'm Kaiser. Didn't mean to butt the line. Um, all right. So Paul, uh, alcohol, much like alcoholism, doesn't necessarily go away but i can be relieved from the insanity of the first drink this selfing activity see if i'm correct the selfing activity 
doesn't necessarily go away. It's just no longer a problem. Am I right? Because I'm starting to, it's starting to, it's starting to resolve. Well, it's, I don't know. Go ahead. Yeah, it's the, it's the interest moves from it. Like it says in the book, you'll lose interest in self and gain interest in others. That's pretty much the process. Yeah. In this way, others doesn't mean other people. It can be everything. So you lose interest in self and you gain interest in others. You're part of the other, really, <laughs> in a way. Yeah, so that's just the basic diagnosis of recovery. You know, if you go in for a checkup while you're in the process of recovery, that would be a good uh, diagnosis, which is, oh, Paul, yes, you're losing interest in self and gaining interest in others. That's a good sign. Yeah. So it's a loss of interest, really, or the interest wanes. See, if, when you see that it's not you, really, that which is constantly being obsessed over and presented, it, you lose interest in it. Just like if you, were, if you were interested in this world of Stanley because you thought you were Stanley and then there was a sudden recognition, I'm not Stanley, what would happen? What would be one of the first effects? you would lose interest in the story of Stanley. Yeah, because you're not Stanley. <laughs> Stanley's story isn't that interested in, in, except for Stanley, really, yeah? <laughs> See, it's funny, the disease of self takes an ordinary story and makes it entrancing because it's about you, yeah? It convinces you every, every chorus of the song is about you. All the refrains are about you. It's all about you. <laughs> if you see that you as not you, there's a huge loss of interest in it all, yeah? And then you gain interest, not by trying on your own, you observe you've gained interest, let's say, in now. <laughs> the flower I'm seeing on the windowsill, uh, the sound that's outside. Yeah, you're now available and open to what's happening because you're not obsessed with what's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of us are, have recovered to such an incredible degree, but the head just doesn't think so, <laughs> you know? And if you still have faith in the head, <laughs> you won't even able, be able to enjoy your own condition of sobriety. <laughs> it's insane to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why would you... You know, if you seemingly work so hard for a new condition and yet you still can't enjoy the new condition, that sort of sucks. <laughs> I don't know. It just seems like it this morning. So, yeah. Did that help you or whatever? Thumbs up. Good one. Cheers, Kaiser. So um, we've got a hand up there, but I just before I ask Ben, could you just turn your video on, please, before you ask your question? Oh, thank you. Right, okay, mate. There you go. So Ben, you're unmuted, mate. Oh, uh, hello. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, hello, Paul. That's great. Yeah, I love uh, hearing you. I'm relatively new to your message um but i'm really enjoying it and i wonder what you might have to say to this for me because uh yesterday i was in some discomfort and uh physical discomfort and i was trying to tell myself okay like how do i apply that in this situation where it's like this is the little self or this is like the parasite self that's focusing on this pain or this this discomfort yeah. and how do I apply this kind of um, 
new way of think or this new way of being just being and just I'm just fine I'm just being I just happen to have this little discomfort you know at the moment but uh, you know how can I sort of not grab onto that and and make it any worse or, or what what I haven't really heard you talk specifically at like some kind of physical thing and I, I don't know if that might just not be relevant you know so I apologize if it's uh, sort of off topic but that was my oh. question thank you oh no it's very relevant it's very wow. relevant but let's say what you're saying Ben is that something was already in progress a lot of attention was on the discomfort yes Hold on. Ben. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we, we catch this, this example in, 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 it's already in progress. So there's a lot of attention on the discomfort. Yes. Yeah. At that point, all you want to do is distract it. <laughs> yeah. And then these ideas yeah. that we're entertaining now will show uh, value as you keep on going, yeah? When you get established in a certain condition, the effects are different than when you're sincerely taking the position. Like if you read page 63, Bill W. talks about the third step principle and he says, well, all these remarkable things will happen if you sincerely take this position, yes? And then he he shares a litany of effects and then he moves to the next level, which is when you're established, another whole set of remarkable things start happening. Yes. So these ideas we're offering now, uh, when they start stop getting established, then they start showing uh, lasting effects. Yeah. Right now, if you're in a condition where when I have physical discomfort, all the attention of, of Ben or Paul goes to that, you want to have skillful means at hand to, so you can distract the attention. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see? Like I had a, I had my, one of my sponsees who had told me, a, it was a great story. He was with his sons in his garage and an old uh, gas tank blew up, yeah, from a, a spark. And he got about 70 something percent of, bur of third degree burns all over his body. So he was in the hospital in agonizing discomfort and uh, just unbelievable uh, fucking hellish feelings. And then a nurse came in and, and he saw it as she was bothering him. And the nurse says, hey, uh, Cy, there's somebody here I think you can help because the nurse knew he was in AA. And, and he was going, what the fuck? Can't you see I'm in all this discomfort? But then he responded to AA and he said, all right, bring him in. And they brought the person in. And the person and him, Cy, talked for about two hours. And then when the person left, Cy realize he hadn't felt the pain in those two hours yeah so then he got the nurse back in yeah. he says find me every any alcoholic around and bring them keep bringing them in the room yeah so he had found hey that works when nothing else works help other people yeah so that's why so it's all based on where you're at at the moment yeah sometimes you're at, you know, there's a loss of interest. You, the pain doesn't really grab much of your attention. Let's say it doesn't. Maybe it's hugely painful. Then you need to do something. You take an action to get your head off of that topic. Yeah. That's the whole point. One of the Thank main you. ideas of service is we can't, the attention that's driving us crazy based on the, the, mental object of Paul being thought about all day, we found that by doing service, by going to a meeting and listening to others, the attention and interest will be pulled out of that orbit. And when it does, you'll feel better. 
you'll have an experience of feeling better. And then a possibility has been entertained. Hey, so when I pay attention to others, when I'm out there helping others, I lose some of that interest in Paul and I feel a lot better. So therefore people dive into service. Yeah. And they, so they start having this, these experiences and the evidence and builds up and now they're in a new basis and suddenly something shifts where they are now of service which is different than doing service in a weird way now they're of service this is what happens recovery progresses so you just find out ben be able to fit like having like a geiger counter basically see where you're at at the moment moment if you're in that if the house is on fire and you feel like you're being burnt then just get out you know find a pail of water if something if there's the fire and you're not getting burnt and you see jesus i'm actually a fire starter i had no idea of that and then you realize hey i'm not the fire starter and by recognizing you're not the fire starter you stop visiting so many fires it's that's that's the progression of recovery so you just but don't fool yourself if you feel like you're burning up and your house is on fire don't try to take the idea well there is no house and there's no fire get a pail of water yeah thanks paul yeah that's awesome i'm gonna try to practice that thank you yeah 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 Fantastic. it's almost like you get the ability you get the ability and they've gi they've given us a graph of how to take your own pulse you know so you recognize hey i'm up the ass of self there's no di divine proctologist on call hey, hey so what am i gonna do i used to make my bed quite a lot the first year i made my bed a couple times a day sometimes i did a lot of laundry i i gave myself tasks to keep myself busy because it loves to have you isolated and it loves you not doing anything so it can just ruminate and fucking you know so so seeds of discontent and present false evidence as appearing real yeah so you learn skillful means there's a whole thing of buddhism about skillful means basically how to get out how do you, how to get out of the knot while it's being formulated yeah before it becomes a knot, how to get out of the knotting, so to speak. Yeah. They're, they're very helpful when needed. And hopefully by getting a taste of what it's like to be free from the bondage of self, that taste will establish and you may not have to do as much as you used to do to put out the mini fires and the mini embers. You may start having a fire free life. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's exactly the whole beauty of it. Was the not recovery that progresses. Hmm? Recovery progresses. You don't know what it's going to be like, but you'll probably like it when you know it. Yeah, but you don't know what it's going to be like, but you'll probably really like it when you get to know it. Yeah, that's the progress of recovery. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, David. Even so, and uh, back to G. G's back. How are you, G? I hope I'll be okay after I ask this question. Good to see you, Dave. <laughs> Good to see you, Paul. G, alcoholic. And um, <clears throat> yeah, my question to you, Paul, is, um, and it's pretty relevant to my day. I guess it's going to be a bit of a dumping for me. I uh, started a new job. And it's, um, I work in like a methadone clinic. That's the best way I can describe it. Uh, alcoholics go to another clinic, the methadone, they come to us and crack and weed and all the drug addicts come to where I am. <clears throat> and it's not that busy because the social distancing. And so I'm in a new environment. I've, I'm in a new career. I'm with a bunch of new people. And so I'm sitting there <clears throat> at my new job and they haven't really given me a lot to do except for take them for a piss test. And, you know, and so, and I get this, you know, I'm trying not to go into self 
whilst I'm sitting there and I'm not busy. So I'm sitting in this new workplace. I haven't got a lot of work to do. Everyone's busy getting on with what they're doing. Nobody, one or two of them want to be bothered with me. The rest of them are just like, whatever, I probably won't see him again. I'll work somewhere else. And I find myself, I, found, I find it very hard to not go into self at that moment in time. I find it, I find it very hard not to think negatively about some of them. As much as I'm thinking, don't do that, don't believe the head, it's all bullshit. I find it extremely challenging to not look at the man over there who I'll be working with, and he's just not spoken, hardly said anything to me, to not think of him as a dickhead. And then I found out from another person, he's unhappy in his job. So I was like, okay, no wonder that makes more sense. Also, um, I, I'm not sure where you live, Paul, but if like even driving, like when I'm driving through London traffic, I find it very hard to not to be peaceful and just treat. I, I, I find myself driving and I'm driving and I'm thinking I, I might, I might get, I might, I might have to attack someone physically, even though that's never happened even though I've never had to jump out of the car or anything. But I feel better when I'm driving with that mindset. If you under, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Rather than be this, this is you, everyone's... I, 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 I feel more uh, safer if I have that mindset in, in certain situations. And, and then I feel really bad because I come to meetings and I'm sharing and I'm saying solution and this and that. But the truth is, in certain areas of my life I I I I in what goes on up here kind of does help me to move the action figure forward rather than do you know what I mean so I don't know Paul are, have you ever gone through a situation where you're in the dangerous part of the United States say like Chicago or somewhere and you're like <laughs> fuck this I might get shot fuck you I'll shoot you first I don't know <laughs> how would you be really comfortable in in a place in a dangerous place, or, or what? Yeah, yeah. I guess that's what I'm asking. Like, what would you really do, like, Paul? You know, like, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I love you all, guys. And what? We, I mean, what would you really do? What do you really think? Have a holiday. I believe you. You know, people, uh, people go like uh, if I'm, um, let's say, sharing somewhere or something, and so somebody will say, "Are you afraid of sharks?" And I'll say not now because I'm not in the fucking war. <laughs> I don't. Hypotheticals uh, don't mean anything to me. I don't know what I'd do. Roll up the windows and lock the doors. I don't know. <laughs> the other thing is, maybe just maybe, the most telling statement G just gave when he had the little. The machinery, the machinery had a little bump, and he went, I, 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 I. He went, I, 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 exactly. You see, if you lose interest in that I, you'll lose interest in all the yapping that comes after. That's what we're speaking about, yeah? I'm not speaking about how to train yourself not to think, I want to get out of the car and hurt somebody. That's probably available at another Zoom. I have, I, have don't, I have no interest in that whatsoever because it's, it's auxiliary, it's miscellaneous. It's the idea of being the one who's thinking that, yeah? That's what's giving those thoughts a meaning. It's the idea it's G thinking it, yeah? Now question, are you that G that's doing all this yapping? I don't believe so. I think that's what we just addressed for the whole hour, a half hour. Yeah, that's the premise we're sharing. The premise is just that. What bookends all of that? You know, what would I do in Chicago, whatever? What's the bookend before all that? It's G. Now, yeah, and so let's say there's G, and then every all the rest of the books, the next books line up based on G, like an encyclopedia. We're just questioning the G. Take it out, and then you'll see the insanity of H, J, K, whatever. You'll see it. It's just, it's just random miscellaneous shit. Yeah? The meaning of it, it comes from what's before it, G. That's what we're questioning. The idea of G is a mental image. It's an idea manufactured by selfing. 
and reinforced by selfing, and that's where alcoholism lands. It lands on self, yeah? If you want to be free from alcoholism, it always leads you, leading, leads you to having to be free from the bondage of self, because the bondage of self is the, is the carrier of the alcoholism. The alcoholism, what does, why do you think alcoholism amplifies? It amplifies self. That's what it is. It's an amplifier. If you have a sense of jealousy and then you drink, you're up on stalking charges a few months later. Yeah, it amplifies certain qualities that are of self, that are of self. Yeah, and one of them is preceding this miscellaneous shit that goes through our heads and giving it importance because it's G, yeah? It ain't G. It ain't G. You're not going to jump out of a car and kill someone in London. You're not. You have no idea what that person in the next booth at your new job is really thinking. There's a projection of your thinking about you onto them. That's what's happening, yeah? And like it says here, G, you're going to learn how you, you're going to learn that you can face life successfully. By sincerely taking this position, that's not based on G. It's based on a higher power. Instead of G being the preceding meaning, you know, before all these thoughts, why not have the higher power there? And there'll be a loss of interest in all the thoughts about G. Because the higher power isn't G. It isn't this mental idea. Yeah? You'll lose interest in all of that which is called G's, yeah? Not by G learning a methodology, not by G doing it, by losing interest in G. And how you lose interest in G is you see G is not you, yeah? How are you gonna be free from a foreign pathogen if you keep calling it you? How? You're always gonna be in fear of a takeover because you're identified as the disease. Yeah, this is about, see, this is what AA does. AA is an incredible, skillful means to deal with what happens after G happens, yeah? We're giving you an idea of what could possibly happen before G happens, yeah? And it's yeah. in the book, it's not always emphasized, but it's in the book, it's captured as, you know what? you'll realize you're not going to get out of self as self. It basically says that. It says you're going to need a help of something greater than self. It says, hey, you're going to be placed in a position of neutrality with no thought or effort on your part, meaning G's part. None. Yeah. This is what we're sharing today. And then also because of the format, we'll talk about how do I not fucking get run out of a car and beat somebody up or whatnot. But you're not going to do it. You're not. Yeah, it's the you're not. First of all, because you're sitting on a couch right now, so you're yeah. definitely not going to do it at this moment. So why? Who gives a fuck about later? Yeah, yeah. Just see what you. This is an idea. We put it out there. I'm saying the root of the problem is an identification as what you're not, and what you're not is framed and called G. That's what it is. You are, you are the naming of what you're not, yeah? And then once you name it, you take it to be you, yeah? And what happens? When that you is infected with alcoholism, everywhere that you goes into your life, alcoholism gets a chance to take advantage of it, yeah? It knows all of your secrets. It knows fucking everything. It's seen every file. It's gone over every little thing. Yeah? And every time you meet it, where you could fucking recognize it as far and you call it you. That's the act of being identified as self. When it's f going through your files and you come in and you catch it in the midst of thievery, you look at it and it looks at you and you go, oh, it's just me. Yeah. And then you you spend tons of time 
putting a security system in your house when the thief is in the house. And you're not even seeing that. You're so afraid about what's going to happen when it gets in. It's already in. You're already at the effect of it now. (laughs) You're worried about its effect later. You're at the effect of it right now. What's the point? Yeah. What's the point for all the defenses against the disease when you're identified as the disease? Now you're just locking yourself in with the culprit. It's insanity. Yeah. That's why it says, let a little of the sunlight of the spirit in so you can recognize what you're not. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a freeloader that uses everything. You know, we talked about it with Helen last week. I'm sorry, but this triggers it. The bondage of self is sort of like this. You have the ability to reach eight feet, but all you can do is five feet, yeah? The, the bondage of self is it takes away your ability to have a viable relationship with another person. This is the robbery, yeah? It has you cocooned, and you can't imagine fucking opening up your wings. You can't, yeah? And so all these little things of... Oh, being able to enjoy peace of mind. If, if it gives you five seconds, that's a great win. You're so confined. The bondage of self is like a tight wrap, yeah? It's like a straight jacket that you're calling, a straight jacket you're calling an Armani jacket, yeah? A fucking diesel jacket, a G-Star jacket, yeah? It's a straight jacket. There's a, there is a solution, and while, while the solution hasn't been established, then use all the tricks that AA offers, serenity prayer, knowing this too shall pass, yes? All those things, all those things are not the basis of the life. They're there when the basis hasn't really set up yet, yeah? When it's still shaky, when it's, the foundation isn't sound, then you have these thousands of ways, yeah? to sort of limit the shake. But then the fact is you're gonna outgrow that shake and your basis is gonna be sound and you're gonna be able to enjoy peace of mind. And there's not gonna be a time constraint or a circumstantial constraint or you won't have to do it in a, like a conditioned situation like a retreat or a private room where there's no noise. You'll be able to enjoy peace of mind whatever's happening. This is freedom, yeah? But until the freedom gets established, you need ways, skillful means, to distract that fucking train of self, yeah? You've got to sort of, you know, change the railing, go to a meeting. That's what meetings are for. One, They're a manufactured pause, yeah? So that fucking train of self gets stopped and all the foreign fucking passengers get let out. <laughs> You're in great hands, G. You're going through what every person goes through a first day at a job. It's not fucking, yeah. you're not like an exotic <laughs> disease. This is what happens. I'm sitting there, I don't know these people. I want to feel like secure by thinking I do know them. So I, I neutralize them by get, by framing them in my own idea. Oh, the fucking guy doesn't like me, whatever. Yeah, it's just like walking into a situation we want to freeze it because it, it's too much of a threat fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> insane the whole place is a threat i mean we all know it we all know what it's like to be confined because many of us have had relief you don't know when you're confined when you're confined you don't know it the mental state adapts to it And our adaptability has been taken to extreme ends that aren't serving us. Yeah, But when you get relief, then you know what it was like not to have relief. And then you honor it, yeah? And you have gratitude around it. Man, I am so fucking happy about so much shit that's not in my life right now, yeah? Like thoughts about tomorrow and yesterday and shit. (laughs) I mean... Oh, Jesus Christ. 
It's not like I'm in the present moment and I've got 20 little mental dogs nipping at my heels. No, everything's chilled out. I can enjoy peace of mind. What a fucking gift. Yeah. And you're on the same trajectory, bro. You're in recovery. Don't forget that. You're in a present tense movement. Even though you don't think you're doing anything concerning recovery, you're in recovery. You've submitted yourself to this program. It's not just located in an Alano club or in a meeting hall. It's all day. A higher power all day. Like it says in a vision for you, a vision for us. It will constantly reveal to you. You're in constant contact with the higher power. Now. It's never interrupted. It's not broken. You're in constant contact with the higher power. Or let's say it's in constant contact with you. You may not know it, but it knows it. And you're not knowing it is very, very, doesn't mean much. It knows it. Yeah. You're in good hands. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, gee, I love seeing you, bro. Yeah. Thank you very much. And maybe see, you know, you know, it's not all about you at the I'm job site. I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to these things. As a fucking addict, I hated going to methadone clinics. I didn't, I wasn't a heroin addict. I was a coke addict, but of course I was going out with a heroin addict and I, I used to go with the, to the methadone clinic because she didn't trust me in, alone in the apartment. <laughs> so I have to walk with her down Polk Street in San Francisco fucking every morning. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, Do you think I, I, they're I, happy I, fucking clientele? You know, who wants to go to a, get on a line for the methadone clinic? It's not like sale at Nordstrom's Rack. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Not happy customers. <laughs> the last place a heroin addict wants to go is to get methadone. <laughs> they're they're going to be a glum lot, like it says about us in the program. We're not a glum lot. Well, they are a glum lot. <laughs> so you're it's not them that I'm worried about. They're what? all right. It's, it's the management. Of the <laughs> <laughs> the <addict outside. laughs> I like the addict. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's great. <laughs> you guys. Maybe you can bring a little unglumness to their glum life. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm just more worried about the. Um, because it's a lot of admin work as well. You've got to put everything on a computer. And I've had such bad experiences in workplaces in the past. I'm thinking, and you're right, the alcoholism is going through the fire. Oh, so now you, we're getting you to get it. So it has nothing yeah. to do with the guy in the other booth. It's you're well, afraid then, you don't have the ability yeah. to do the job. Then I found out that. Yeah. Good. Turn that over to the care of the higher power. You have a new employer. Yeah? So you tell the new employer, hey, I don't think I got it in me to do the job. And it's causing me to be anxious. And I'm trying to distract that by blaming it on the guy next door and shit like that. Tell the truth. The higher power is in will take care of you. That's the whole deal in AA. You have a new employer being all powerful. It's going to take care of you. If you perform its work, Works well and stay close to it. You can't be far from everywhere, so you've only got one requirement, which is to perform its works well, not your works, its work. And how the hell can you judge if you're doing that or not? So you might as well just believe you're performing its works well. Mm, yeah? yeah? So now you can be rest assured hey, if this job is meant for me, it's going to continue. If it ain't, it won't. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely going into the sharp end, so. I'll need, I, I will need my higher power every day, all day, like you're saying. Well, there you go. Well, there, and so that's fantastic because it's there every day, all day. So you, you matched it right. Yeah. And that guy, yeah. that guy, he's unhappy because he it's, it's not me. He's unhappy about the job. Someone else told me later, they said, he's not happy. And then he told me the place, the, the, the hub I'm going to, how bad it is. Like it's the worst one. And he said, he's been there nine months. So he's unhappy. So I was like, shit. Yeah. I thought he was unhappy. Because you know me, I'm one of those typical addicts. I walk into a place, one person's unhappy, and I'm thinking, yeah, they don't course. like me. And everyone else is so nice to me, but this one person doesn't. Is And it wasn't even anything 
nothing to do. Like everything has to be about me. And, and I, and I recognize that. I, and it's just crazy though. Sometimes it's just so hard to just shift it, but you're right. I've got to just use the tools, the usual tools, the prayers, the, just, but I find I it like. Prayer is incredible. Serenity prayer is a very yeah. powerful tool because it doesn't take long. It's easy to memorize. And it basically, it's beautiful. It presents a, a complete, a completeness in such a short little whack. I think it's very powerful. Yeah, I used I to use it a few, lot. Yeah, I said it a few times today. I think it's just nerves and, and past experience. And I, and I don't want to lose this job. So yeah. it's new. Well, you'll be right. And they'll give me a chance, I'm sure. So. Yeah, so they'll probably give you a better chance than you give you. <laughs> okay. Love that, Paul. That's brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Cheers, G. Thank you, Paul. Cheers, Cheers mate. See Good you. To see you again. Um, and final question of the uh, day to Beatrice. Beatrice, over to you. Hi, everybody. Beatrice, alcoholic. You. Hi, Beatrice. hi, David, and thank hi. you, and and hi, Paul. Hi, everybody. I really just have a question and. And just um, because Paul was talking a lot about the self and the manifestation of self and, and the real self. And so I'm always um, thinking about that line in the book. And I really like your take on it, where they talk about the alcoholic unable at times to differentiate the true from the false. And that's what I, what I think about. Like, is that what they were talking about when they wrote that in the book? Thanks. That's all I have. Well, yeah, because, well, I, I like the acronym of fear, the false evidence appearing real, because I see that's not a, it's not a passive event. The false evidence needs us to appear real. Yeah. False evidence is false evidence, but it's false evidence appearing real. That's our role in it. Yeah. Either we're going to see it as false evidence or it's going to be appearing real to us. And that's not based on any kind of heroic achievement. It's based on the basis we're in. If we're trusting something finite, we're going to be taking a lot of false evidence to appear real. When you are in the trusting something infinite, we'll see false evidence as false evidence. It's just that simple. And it may not be complete all at once, but there'll be a growth towards the one end where you'll be starting to see false evidence not being real. Yeah. And then, you know, people here have had many experiences of that. It's quite relieving and it's you're immediately a sense of availability and presence. Yeah. Because your head hasn't been distracted into what's not happening. Yeah, it's awesome. So. That's a living thing because there's a lot of false evidence being presented a lot, a whole lot all day by other people, by you. And, uh, and the habit is, is, oh, definitely it's real. Yeah. But to, we don't have the luxury to allow that habit to continue because taking enough false evidence appearing real, we're going to drink and use again. We are. We're going to act out. And we're not all only going to hurt ourselves, we're going to hurt others, yeah? And we're not going to be of maximum use, yeah? So this isn't child's play in a way. Us taking false evidence appearing real leads to a true disaster, yeah? And uh, if you can't find the strength in yourself, get the strength from the we, because no matter where you are, there's going to be someone there that's not taking false evidence to be appearing real. <laughs> I hopefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a real shit show when everyone's taking false evidence to appear real. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that's the start of like a riot. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Beatrice. Nice to see you. Okay, Paul. Well, that's it. Sorry if um, I know there's a couple more hands up before, but um, I think we'll call it a day. If you want to come back, we're back here again on Tuesday. 
Um, Paul I can answer another one, Brett, if you want. You sure? But do you need to go today, Dave? No, I'm good. I'm good for another 10 minutes. So um, oh, there was Michael a, McGill. Michael McGill did. Yeah, he came in a bit late, though. So just, um, Michael, did you All right, just let him, yeah, let it, let's see. And then we'll go. Okay. Michael, you want to raise your hand again? I can find you there, mate. I think you went About there. five minutes. Okay, five minutes. Michael, are you still there? Do you see him, Lebowski? No. All right. No, well, then we can, then right. we can talk. We can call it a day. Yeah. Yeah. Let's call it a day. If you so, want. So, yeah. Just to say, um, Paul's got his um, his non duality. Uh, I guess call him Satsangs on a Saturday. So that's at one thirty tomorrow uh, Pacific time. So that's really good time for the UK if you're in the UK because that'll be uh, nine thirty uh, Saturday, which is I highly recommend. And just to say, all this uh, Paul stuffs on zenbitchslap.com so all these videos are going to be there plus his books which i highly recommend if you haven't bought one then certainly get your hands on it there's some some fantastic stuff in there um so yeah so paul do you want to say goodbye yeah i do yeah. hey mike nice to see you mike i think we may have people come over tomorrow mike at the house for coffee rob <laughs> nice to see you rob is never too far oh. from rob far we got Paul. Nice to see you, Paul. I can't make out the shirt, but I'm sure it's cool. <laughs> Danny M. Oh, I see it now. Yeah, we got 944272. I've seen him before. Her. James Lebowski. Always good to see you, bro. Jack, you're in a car now. Thank God it's not moving. It's good. Kate. We got Kristen. Very nice to see you again, Kristen. Yeah. Yeah. Keep let that mind unfurl, honey. Don't put any periods. Just let it break through all the paragraphs. Beatrice, nice to see you. Sydney, Sydney, very nice to see you, honey. Yeah. We got Dennis. Again, we got Elena. Again, she's went back to the old reliable wall. I like to see that. That's good. That's how I've come to know you, Elena. <laughs> so, Mike O. Virginia. Virginia. <laughs> and we got Kurt and Linda. How are you, honey? A lovely couple, yeah. So, they met on, a, they met on a, the dating game 25 years ago. <laughs> They won the big prize. They got a washer or a dryer set. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We got Dax. Dax is like in a big vehicle. Fucking, what are you driving, Dax? I don't know. Maybe a lot of meat. A lot of meat or something. Zoe. Nice to see you, Zoe. Helen. Very nice, Helen. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to see you, Helen. Stick with us, yeah? Yeah. We got uh, Kaiser, Kaiser, Gabriel. We got Sukai, uh, Andy. Nice to see you, Andy. You look like you're advertising for a skateboard company. I like that look, yeah. I'm gonna go shred today. We got Sonny, Sonny. Sonny, you've been very docile and very good. You've been domesticated through non-duality. That's good. We got Dale. Is that Dale? Yes. Nice to see you, Dale. We got Phoenix. G, my main man. Suo. Kelly. A nice little room out there. Uh, we got, let's see. Oh, uh, we got Topher. Nice to see you, Topher. Yeah. Uh, Leia. There's Leia. Leia is just, uh, Leia is laying down. It's pretty appropriate. Yes. Big thumbs up. That's good. And then we have a lot of uh, anonymous people. So let's let them stay anonymous. Okay. Thanks so much, folks. I'll see you again Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Wednesday. All the information is on the website, zenbitchslap.com. And uh, fantastic. Thank you. Awesome. Thank Again, you. Paul, bye. And and the, the room's gonna the room will stay open for a while. 
All right. Yes. Yeah, it will stay on for a few minutes. That's for sure. All right. Uh, okay. See you guys. See bye you. bye. Okay. So thanks very much, everyone. Um, I'll unmute you all. You can stay around, and have a chat if you want. Um, I've got to go to my home group in about. 10